Hello everybody, welcome back to the ASUS RG YouTube channel. This is JJ once again, and we're bringing you back some more information regarding our Mars 2 product and uh, some of its performance metrics. So what we're gonna be showcasing today in this video is going to be relative to temperature performance. One of the things that we're definitely proud about in terms of this car design is the non-reference VRM elements, as well as the heat sink and the fan assembly. Uh, with the VRM, of course, we have our super alloy power design, which helps give us better efficiency and lower operating temperatures uh, around the VRM. And of course, with the uh, DirectCU2 uh, design in terms of the 12 centimeter fans, as well as the advanced copper heat pipe implementation that helps to give us uh, very good thermal performance in terms of dissipation. So we're gonna go ahead and do two different levels of monitoring. Um, of course, this type of open test bed environment that I have currently here is not representative of what most users are gonna have. Most users are gonna be utilizing a chassis and uh, we'll be measuring temperatures in there as they should be uh, when somebody goes ahead and gives you temperature results. But here we just wanted to kind of give you just a general idea of what the temperature expectation is going to be when working with this card, as well as giving you an idea in regards to the acoustic performance as well. So I've gone ahead and launched our GPU tweak application as we normally have it. And as we can see here, our GPU has been essentially idling. And in most situations, we're generally gonna have an idle temperature somewhere between about uh, 33 to about 37C. And we can see right here, uh, it's definitely idling right at about 37 C and if I go ahead and uh, stop talking for a second we're going to see that the card is uh, overall very quiet. So we can see here of course we have the ambient uh, air conditioning in here uh, uh, which right now is actually not even uh, un act actively really on so it's not really affecting too much of that but it is helping us to give a little bit better control in terms of a consistent ambient temperature. Uh, but that being noted as you saw the card is very quiet under idle conditions essentially overall and un uh, not, not really audible. So we're going to go ahead and now um, put in Unigen at maximum settings which is going to be representative of probably um, close to 90% of almost all games under the market. I have seen in my internal testing that Crisis 2 sometimes might even produce, produce a little bit higher level of consistent load, but it's always important to remember that as compared to synthetic, unrealistic tests such as Furmark, uh, that place a 100% consistent load on the GPU, games aren't going to be representative of that. In most situations, there's going to be a variance in terms of the actual load that's placed onto the GPU and to the shaders. Um, it's also important that generally when you do temper testing, uh, such as great sites like uh, Hardware Canucks um, or you know, Hard OCP, they take their time and they do testing with real world games. And the benefit of this is, is that it actually utilizes the graphics card. And when you utilize the graphics card, you're actually using all the compartments uh, in terms of the way that a GPU is designed. So you're utilizing all elements of it. And sometimes a synthetic test like that is really only targeted at doing something specific as opposed to uh, really testing all parameters of the card in terms of its actual designed focus. So um, as we can see here, we had it at 37C. So what we're gonna go ahead and jump over to now is we're just gonna go ahead and leave GPU uh, tweak open here so that it can go ahead and monitor our temperatures. And we're gonna go ahead and now uh, open up Unigen and see what happens after we let it run for a little while. In most situations, generally, you're gonna get uh, the maximum uh, temperature differential after about uh, three to five uh, minutes. Um, but in most situations, you're generally gonna get an idea of the peak of uh, uh, temperature raise within about the first minute and a half. Um, but of course, it all depends on the type of load that's being placed on. We've specifically chosen this uh, benchmark just because of the heavy use of tessellization and a number of other advanced technologies that do put a high strain onto the card. It also has very strong SLI um, uh, loading policies, and that's important because we want to be able to try to balance the load policy between both GPUs to get that temperature up. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, set the antroscopic filtering to 16 times, anti-aliasing to 4, full screen. Uh, we're going to go ahead and run it at our maximum resolution of 5760 by 1080. Now keep in mind this might even produce potentially higher low temperatures than most users are going to see. The main reason being is that we're forcing all the RAM decks in the car to actually run across a much higher resolution, three panels, than you would normally have for a single panel resolution. And most of our tests internally uh, for single panel, you're generally going to see an operating temperature of somewhere between about 72 to 76 C, uh, which is quite good for this class of part, which is pretty much the fastest single card on the planet. 
So pretty impressive. And the other thing that we're proud of is that the thermal uh, performance also goes along with a very, very nice noise profile in terms of the, the card stays very quiet even under these high load policies. So DirectX 11, shader set to high, tessellation to normal, anti antiscopic filtering set to 16 times and AA4X. So let's go ahead and now run this and uh, we'll see what happens. So we can see here we've got uh, Unigen running across our uh, 3D uh, surround and uh, vision setup here. Uh, so it's looking awesome. Frame rate is very smooth, very clean with everything all maxed out. And so it's going to go ahead and just render, go ahead and ramp up the temperatures, and we'll see what it looks like. And we can see right here we've had GPU tweak, and right there I can right away see it was a 65, 66. It's now cooling down to 63. But uh, it pretty much mirrors the same results I always told you guys before. If we just go back and just trach our finger here, pretty much we were keeping solid at an overall 75 degrees in terms of the low temperature. So quite impressive, um, especially when we go down here and we can see, you know, right here GPU utilization was straight pegged at 100%. Um, it's very impressive to see the overall cooling performance of uh, what the card was offering. We can see that here that the fan duty uh, was essentially only hitting a peak of about uh, 57, 58 percent and our, our, our overall fan RPM was really only getting up to about uh, 1260 at its peak which is one of the reasons why the card was so quiet. Uh, this is part of the reason why we chose to have a triple slot design with the 12 centimeter fans because we're able to move a large amount of air, huge amount of CFM airflow overall to the heatsink assembly to the GPUs but while keeping that low rotation rate. So we're going to go ahead and uh, launch Crisis 2 and uh, take a look and see uh, what the overall temperature looks like. So I've already uh, pre-installed the high resolution texture pack. I've pre-installed the DirectX 11 patch. So this is uh, fully up to date in terms of taking the maximum visual quality that the Cry uh, Engine 3 uh, has to offer. And uh, all the settings have already been set to maximum in terms of uh, all the eye candy, all the fidelity features are all set, uh, set, I believe, right now to Ultra, which is the highest level. So we'll pretty much be running uh, the game at the highest level that we can, and uh, that, of course, will stress the GPU. And once again, same as we did in Unigen, we're spanning it across three monitors, and so, of course, spanning it across three monitors is going to go ahead and uh, put as much workload as possible. So here we're uh, having it run just um, a, a benchmark. Um, in Crisis 2 and we'll go ahead and we'll see what the kind of temperature performance looks like. So we can see here that even as we're going through all this dynamic gameplay, you've got all this dynamic depth of field, you've got tessellation, the high resolution maps, uh, you've got special type of filters that are being run, uh, all these elements. The card is uh, still pretty quiet. It's gone ahead and ramped up slightly. So it's gone ahead and been lightly audible. Uh, of course, within a chassis, it's going to even be minimized a little bit more. Uh, so overall, my opinion, still a very, very quiet solution uh, when you're taking into consideration the performance that this part is offering. So it's gone ahead and finished the benchmark run. And we'll go ahead and uh, bring up GPU tweak. And we can still see that the peak temperature that was, uh, <clears throat> was present was still 76. So overall, uh, we don't see any change. So even with uh, Crisis 2, uh, we didn't get a change in the overall temperature performance. So quite impressive. So uh, stay tuned for the next video where we'll show you performance uh, for temperature testing of the Mars 2 inside of a chassis. As always, if you guys have any questions, concerns, comments, feedback, uh, please leave them on our YouTube page or at Twitter or, or Facebook. Or as always, check us out at www.asusrog.com forward slash forums.